days we won't apologize quite as much, but we are not there yet. So welcome everyone to admin today on this uh, lovely Thursday, November 18th. Violet, are you out there? Yep. Or, uh, I will yeah. do roll really fast for us. Yeah, yeah Violet, um, you can do Sure. We have myself, Violet Plummer, Adrian Beck, Allison Franz, Andrew Chorney, Ann Hughes, Chet Krauser, Commissioners Strohmeyer and Vero, Diana Manetta, Dylan Jakes, Emily Brock, Emmy Bristow, John Hart, Kyla Leonard, Mel Fisher, Mike Snook, Sarah Bell, Andy Bourne, Matt Suick, MCAT, and Tom Browder. Did I miss anybody? Okay, back to you, Dave. All right, thanks, uh, Violet. Is there any public comment on items down on today's agenda? And just so everyone knows, we are recording the meeting. Okay, let's dive right into our action items today. The first one comes to us from Billy. Uh, talk to us about what you have. Hi, um, we have, we're asking your permission to um, sign a contract with a new carnival provider. This carnival provider, um, is offering us a minimum guarantee, which is substantially higher than our previous carnival. So for instance, we had a record breaking year this year and just the minimum of this contract would have netted us an additional 30,000 in revenue for the county. Um, and I called all the references for this carnival and everyone said that the carnival has never not met the minimum requirements. So they really see potential here in Missoula and they're willing to um, bring great rides. Their safety is impeccable and we would love to bring them on board. And they're willing to do a lot of nice things like reading for um, kids program where they can read to ride, get free tickets and also open up the carnival an hour early one day and have folks who have mobility challenges actually access the rides without interference from large crowds. So we are excited to start working with them and we ask for your permission to do so. And talk to us about how is the uh, minimum guarantee of revenue determined? Well, um, so carnivals rent the space from us. It's not something where we are actually um, partners with us or, or anything like that. They, are, they, they come, they rent the space, and then we get a revenue share of their proceeds. So at 30% um, or is what they're offering us anything above that 175,000 initial. Okay, but 175 initial, and that's the minimum. Minimum, uh-huh. And for instance, we made 155 this year. Had they been our carnival this year, we would have netted an additional 30,000. Okay. Great, this is um, kind of a right, bigger. Go ahead. Yes, Emily. Bigger fares. Um, we're kind of, you know, um, moving up a notch in the in the fare industry. They do Coeur d'Alene. They do big cities, um, and have a little bit more um, ability to manage uh, bigger crowds. And then also something that's nice about them is that they did agree to what set them apart is they agreed to hold off on selling. Um, certain concessions where our nonprofit vendors are selling. So they're not going to sell corn dogs because it competes with Vikings, and they're not going to sell cotton candy because it competes with um, Hellgate Band. And so um, they were willing to to make changes in their program um, so that our nonprofit vendors could continue to um, see uh, high revenue. So is anyone offering uh, chocolate frozen bananas? I couldn't find any last year. <laughs> yeah, we snow cones were definitely the thing we heard the most complaints about us not having, and they're they're gonna bring snow cones, so we got that covered. <laughs> so is the 175 what uh, that's in the PSA what they offered, or did we was that something that we um, uh, suggested be in there? Oh, well, it's a negotiation, but it's what they put in their proposal was that that number. And then we negotiated the rest. Sure. Well, thank you. Yeah, I move that we approve the PSA with Paul Maher shows. I'll second that. Further uh, discussion or public comment on the PSA? PSA meaning Professional Services Agreement for anyone who's wondering. 
Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thanks, Billy. Emily, on to you. Uh, we have an item related to our beloved repository in uh, Bonner. So um, the uh, Missoula, De this I'm putting on my other hat now with the Missoula Development Authority. Um, the board recommended an amendment to the development agreement with Bonner Property Development. So the original agreement um, had a do not exceed amount of three million, and they would like to increase it to three million nine hundred and seventy four thousand seven hundred six dollars and sixty eight cents, and then change the completion date to June thirtieth, twenty twenty two. Um, and so the repository removal at Bonner um, was not what we thought it was going to be. And we didn't have access to the site until we started the cleanup. Uh, it was controlled by DEQ. And so there was more tonnage and cleanup is more tedious than we originally thought. So originally we bid 60 tons. And when I say we, I should say Bonner property developers because we're actually um, uh, funding this project, but it's being managed by the property owner. So the project originally been 60 tons, 60,000 tons, and the engineer's estimate um, used to calculate, you know, the $3 million do not exceed, include an extra, you know, 10 tons as contingency. Um, and, you know, construction began in June, and by the end of July, we were already at that 70,000 ton um, of material mark. Um, and so the change orders were issued at that time. You know, I consulted with the, the team out there and Ethan's been at their project meetings too. Um, so we basically decided that the develop the Bonner property um, developers decided to continue to remove all of the big kind of material that they can. And so they paid the balance of the work um, and that got us to like 3.4 million. Um, and then um, on July, on August 13th, um, the work stopped unfinished. So the bulk of the waste has been removed. Um, the county has contributed 3 million. The property owners have spent about 400,000 um, and there's still about $555,436,000 um, of work remaining to clean up the site and get it building ready per um, the um, development agreement. And in, in your packet, there is a letter to DEQ that really details the cleanup. And Matt Suick is on the line. He's our um, the engineer from um, IMAG who's managing this project. So I will let him get into the details of why this cleanup is so different than we thought. But um, suffice to say, the project conditions at the bottom of the pile, we thought it was a flat slab and it wasn't. It was um, very irregular and there was like 61 holes that are 18 inches deep and six inches wide that have to be vacuumed out. And it's um, gonna just take a lot of, um, it's like, you know, taking a, a, a toothbrush to, to do the rest of the cleaning. So, um, Matt's on the line to answer questions about the cleanup, but the MDA board does feel that um, the parties acted in good faith um, on the project. The contractor did a good job um, and fully cleaning up the site is the priority for the county. Um, it's important to remember that the property owners didn't create the waste. Um, they're just cleaning it up. They got left with it. Um, and so as we work with um, as I work with uh, Andrew and the finance team, the board, although it wasn't in their motion, but they did um, really want us to um, lean towards 15 year terms on the bonds um, as opposed to 30 year because they agree with the um, me and and I think you that um, it's time to think about sunsetting this district. Um, and so um, adding another 30 years to it was is not good for the for the community. Um, hey, Lloyd, that's yeah. Lloyd, so would this are, are we contemplating reimbursing Bonner development for the cost that they've in the 400 or so thousand dollars that they put into this to get us keep this project moving? Yes, and also 555,000 to finish the work. Right. So to play devil's advocate, and I don't know if this came up at the MDA board meeting, um, one might ask, ought the property owners to have uh, some skin in the game here on this? Yep, that came up. Uh, it was discussed, um, and um, the board landed on um, doing paying for the full cleanup. Okay, anything more to add there? What was their rationale for that? Um, I think that it's um, uh, in 
good th that the property develop Bonner property developers have acted in good faith. The reason why this project is costing more than originally thought is because um, of conditions outside of their control. Um, and um, we want to see it get done. And because we will see um, they they are planning to build on that site, and so we will see tax increment um, once it's cleaned up. OK, Matt, is there anything that you'd like to add? No, I think uh, this is Matt Suick with IMEG. Um, I think Emily did a great job explaining any everything. I'm happy to answer any questions that there are outstanding. Thanks, Andrew, is there something you'd like to add? Yeah, I, um, I was looking at numbers again and. Uh, they they have about a million five in cash and I wanted to use about a million two fifty as part of the loan, leaving a balance at two million seven twenty four seven oh six point sixty eight. I believe we can finance that over a 10 year period rather than a 15 year period. We're currently taking in revenue of 350. Oh, last year we took in the revenue of 353. That should be up this year. Uh, debt service would be 313 on a 10 year bond. Um, I think that that should be the objective, perhaps. So so basically uh, the the increment that's coming in would over the next 10 years be uh, predominantly eaten up for the debt service for this. Is that yes. correct? Yeah. yeah. There's about a $40,000 cushion last year, but it would increase this year to probably 60, then next year to maybe, you know, who knows. Yeah. I think yeah. there's a sense, you know, you wouldn't be able to create a TED district like this now with one property owner. Um, and, you know, there's just kind of a sense that, you know, it's time to close this district down and um, since you know the, all the kind of improvements are going to go to the one property owner um, and um, yeah it's just time to move on finish this project and move on well hopefully whatever gets redeveloped where the repository is will increase the amount of increment in the next decade too so <clears throat> we won't be completely yeah in the we, did, we did definitely kick tires on um you know, asking the property developer owners. I keep saying it's called Bonner property developers, but they're also the property owners um, to to do the um, kind of the backfill piece and getting it building ready. And and they were you know considering doing that in house, um, but I you know I think the board was concerned that it was just going to drag on and that um, it's better to just just get it cleaned up and get it building ready and then and then let it go. All right, thanks. Any other questions? Nope. Um, request that we amend the development agreement with Bonner property to increase the do not exceed amount for the repository removal from three million to three million nine hundred and seventy four thousand seven hundred six dollars and sixty eight cents. I'll second that any further discussion or public comment on this item any public comment okay seeing none all in favor all right Aye. thanks emily matt andrew hey, thanks everyone nice job emily all right adrian beck item number three voice product services service good morning no oh, sorry <laughs> oh, right on you so what you have before you is a software maintenance agreement with Voice Product Services LLC. Uh, this is the parent company that uh, houses our 911 recording software that we use for our 911 operations. It not only captures work for our. Uh, could folks mute themselves out there, please? Thank you. Uh, so. This software enables um, our 911 center to not only capture all radio traffic and transmission, but all incoming phone lines and all dispatcher activity while um, in the performance as a public safety communications officer. Okay, 
Sounds pretty straightforward. Straightforward. Um, Across the board approved chair sign software maintenance agreement with Voice Product Services LLC. I will second that. Any further discussion or public comment on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, Adrian. Thank you. All right, Mr. Hart, are you out? There you are. We have a request that the board approve a resolution <laughs> changing the name of Five Wound Way to Five Wounds Way. Uh, give us a little background on this, John. Well, I don't have a lot of background, commissioners. What, what I can tell you is that uh, Five wound way has been in existence as a private road in missoula county for quite a long time and most if not all of the residents on that road have referred to it as five wounds way and there are uh, official missoula county documents that reference the road name as five wounds way but at some point in time the most official of county road records um, had it uh, identified as five wound way and this recently came to the attention of some of the residents on this private road and they asked Missoula County to change the name and um, so that seemed like a fairly simple innocent request and the only thing that I asked them to do in return was to make it clear that every person who live lives on that private road agrees that the name should be Five Wounds Way. And uh, one of the residents, Nancy Ebel, uh, took that on and uh, went door to door and got signatures um, on a petition that's part of the agenda packet. Mike Snook, our GIS director, verified that uh, indeed those were the those were all the residents on this private road and so um, fortunately you have the authority to name roads in missoula county that are not under the jurisdiction of a federal state or tribal entity uh, five wound way is just such a road and so um, i'm recommending and on behalf of all the residents on this private road that you approve the resolution that uh, you have in front of you to change the name of Five Wound Way to be officially known as Five Wounds Way in the records of Missoula County. How, how's, that for, how's that for kind of a fun, fun one this morning? Is, yeah, that, is that why you tied your hair back? Uh, well, that and I sometimes I look like Sasquatch without a beard, and so I thought I'd just pull my hair back today. I've never thought of Sasquatch. I, I thought that maybe you resembled Jesus, but uh, um, it, so so John is is it the case is it the case then that for private roads to change the name it requires the governing body to do so. Uh, if, and so a group of folks on, along a private road couldn't just go out there and change it themselves? Well, I, I, th I think that, uh, you know, they could probably refer to whatever name they want, but if they want it reflected in the official records of Missoula County, um, you know, for purposes of our 911 system, um, our addressing, our GIS, our property information system, um, they yeah they they need to go through a formal process um i think i think mike snook is on the line and he might have more technical expertise than i have in terms of uh, the importance of of having um the governing body officially um uh recognize the name of a private road and and how that benefits everybody but maybe I'm speaking for something that Mike can't share with us. Thanks, John. Mike, is there anything you want to add? This is kind of a momentous occasion since I cannot remember ever changing the name of a road, private or otherwise, pr previously. And who knows, this might even be noteworthy for the, uh, uh, the Pathfinder up in Sealy Lake since we have a representative on the line today. Mike? 
Yeah, I, um, as far as I know, uh, na you know, the private road naming is, like John said, sort of up to the uh, constituents along the road. Um, I thought it would be a, a good, you know, um, little thing to prop up this name change. We have a document to refer to if it goes through this this way. The fact that we have all of the owners uh, ad or signatures on this document also helps to, you know, bolster the, the case for it. Um, it's kind of an amazing, an amazing lot of work for an S, but uh, it's, it's good to get it cleared up. And once this does uh, get approved, I can go in and change all of the records in our in our system, which trickles down to the 911 system as well. I just wonder what the wounds that are being referenced refer to. So uh, we'll yeah, they want to have a history lesson. Yeah, we'll leave that to your imagination. I don't well, have the history lesson either, although there there is a there there was a uh, 19th century Nez Perce tribal member named Five Wounds with an yeah. S. And yeah. it's my understanding that that is the individual that this road was uh, intended to be named after. Uh, I tried to get a little beta about this individual on the Internet, but I didn't spend much time. Um, you know, it looks like he might have been. Uh, um, um, part of the Chief Joseph uh, flight, uh, and, but he might have been a resident of the Bitterroot Valley for a while too. I don't know, but but sure enough, when I googled five wounds, it is with an S, and there is such an individual, and so that background that I was told appears to be true. So this name change is also setting the historical record and and um and and recognizing this individual accurately is there anyone on the line today who lives on five wounds way who would like to speak apparently not they they apparently did not think it would be the nail biter that uh it may be who knows uh, <laughs> I, did, I did invite nancy ebel and she um she said she would try to join if she could but um, uh, she's probably busily engaged in something else this morning. Okay. Well, good enough. Uh, fascinating. What do you think? Uh, yep. Set the historical record straight and grammatical record straight. Um, and uh, yes, request that we approve the resolution changing the name of Five Wound Way to Five Wounds Way. I will second that. Any further discussion or public comment on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, John. Thanks so much. Thanks, Mike. Thank, Thank you. you. Go, forth and, go forth and change the name. So we've got a couple pieces of correspondence. The first relates to the RV disposal station at Clearwater Junction. Tom Browder, would you like to uh, uh, give us a little bit of an overview here? I will. Thanks for giving me time. Um, in our role, Sealy Lake Community Council of getting feedback from the community. The last few months, it's come up that the state, Fish, Wildlife and Parks, down at the Clearwater Junction rest stop, which is a heavily used facility, has had the RV dump there closed. And, you know, if you're not an RVer, I guess you don't think about it. But obviously, the pandemic summers of 2020 and this past summer, we've seen, we don't know the data, but at least 40 or 50 percent increase in RV traffic through up and down 83 and of course up and down 200. The That was the only public entity supported RV dump, probably between Missoula and maybe Great Falls, not sure about Lincoln, in Sealy Lake, uh, Lindy Steakhouse, Mike Lindemer, has a, and obviously a private um, company, but they've had a publicly available RV dump, but it clearly can't service the volume we've seen the last couple of years. What kind of brought this to a head is some reports we had of folks just driving on some of our secondary roads, some of the logging roads, opening their tanks and dumping their black water tanks along roads, um, which is pretty gross. And then 
also while Mike's facility is, you know, it's certainly in compliance. I mean, it was built some time ago. Our sewer board folks with all they've got to deal with are concerned that, you know, we could be hitting a limit with that. And we've had input from Mike on this. So what we decided to do with a new um, FWP administration and some grant money out there, I don't think any of us know exactly how much, but we'd like to get reopening this on their list of projects and hopefully get it near the top. Um, the way I understand it, and Chet Krauser was helpful kind of guiding me on this, that it would probably get assigned out to a district. And once that happens, I think we could certainly, we've already had good support from the businesses around, from the you know, outfitting people that use the, the um, outdoors a lot. Also the in-town businesses, because one concern is that if a person's coming along 200, they can't dump their clear water they may not take a side trip up to sea late. Um, yeah, so it it just seems like a, a logical thing to do. And we know as a council, we are sort of information gathering only, but if this letter meets with the approval of the commissioners, we'd like to send it to the director. And then assuming the logic of it is clear to FWP as well, and let them put it in and prioritize it and put it in their list of projects, then if they needed additional community help, uh, whatever it might be, of course, I think the community be, would be more than glad to do that. So what we're asking today is that the commissioners approve the text of this. We would send it, signed by Jack Greenwood, our vice chair, and the rest of the community council, and then hope that they will get a positive response saying yes we have looked at this and it's you know priority number x on our list so any questions about it uh yeah Tom, to... so so what about the board of county commissioners sending a letter um yeah that we talked to I think I brought this up on one of our monthly community council calls a couple of months ago. And yeah, it, I think it'd be great if the county commissioners would as well. And we didn't know, I guess we haven't done this for a while. And should it be a single letter with lots and lots of signatories? Should it be multiple letters like from the, I think Jim Irvin from City County Health said he would, you know, whatever we might need, I'm sure we could get the, uh, some of the business folks in the valley to send a letter where whatever you think's appropriate we'd be glad to do chat are you on the line i am dave yeah talk to us about your thoughts as far as process and being as effective as possible oftentimes what happens is that a community council approaches us approaches the Board of County Commissioners with a request and the County Commission will send a letter on behalf of, uh, from on our letterhead uh, to the entity to which we want to address the letter. Uh, it sounds like in this case, Sea the Sealy Lake Community Council is, is looking for authorization to send a letter under their banner. No, but, this, uh, is, this is on our letter. Uh, well, that's different than the motion, or not? It's not a motion. Oh. But anyway, go ahead, go ahead, Chet. Well, uh, it sounds like what Juanita just pulled up on the screen. But I can't see it; it's frozen. So, um, are, are we go ahead. basically are we looking to uh, have a letter on Missoula County letterhead sent to FWP, or simply uh, concurrence to allow the CLA Community Council to send a letter? Yeah, I'm, so what I looked at in the packet, I, I thought was on maybe a community council letterhead. Tom, is that what you had, had shared? Yeah, it was. We um, obviously our letterhead is not as impressive as yours, but we have a logo and we have the names of the council. Yes. So what we have, and it, it should have been, I sent it in um, when we requested this time, that 
it's on our letterhead signed by the community council for, and it's I mean obviously it hasn't been sent to anyone and that's was kind of the basis for this discussion yeah Vi I'm sorry to interrupt here Violet could you uh I don't have access to pull that up right now could you queue up onto the screen the letter that's yeah. attached to the packet because I, yeah. I feel like yes thank you <laughs> so Dave you take Sorry, go ahead, Violet, if you were going to say something. Oh, sorry. Yep. So the letter that's in the packet is not on commissioner letterhead at all. It's it okay, is thank from, you. Yep. Well, but I, I can pull it up still. Yep, we'll do. Okay. We're so I guess, Dave, to answer your question a little bit, um, I do think that there's value in having the commissioners uh, contribute their voice to the request. And so one suggestion would be to support the letter that was received by the community council you could even attach that as part of your letter that was sent to fish wildlife and parks um and and i'd leave it up to you to what you what you think makes the most sense as far as you know conveying the same information or an additional ask i just would i guess share that i appreciate the the community's interest in getting on board with this topic and this has been a challenge for a number of years as tom mentioned there really isn't another dump station available other than coming into Missoula or going to Holland Lake or I assume probably Lincoln. So it is really in a critical hub um, and it, it wouldn't surprise me. We'd continue to see some pretty major uh, issues associated with people finding alternative places to dump if they don't have this facility. Um, I think this is a good example of where we're seeing dilapidated recreational infrastructure, and this is a perfect example of it affecting our rural communities. So I think at the bigger picture, I hope the state looks at this um, during the next session. I hope that there's interest with um, the, some of the changes in FWP and starting to explore that because this is a very broad need, but I appreciate again the interest at, in Sealy to address this. And I know Tom's worked hard with folks up there to engage the business community. You know, having skin in the game and coming with a solution is always a, a way to get to yes um, in, from my past experience. Uh, so I, I think it's a great idea. But anyway, back to the to my suggestion, Dave, that would be one way to handle that if the commission was inclined to submit a, a letter of their own. Well, what about this for an idea? And I think this is where you're going, Chet. What if we draft a cover letter that uh, hits on or elaborates any of the points in, in the community council's letter that, that we would want to attach this letter that we're looking at right now to ours and send them both in simultaneously. Is that kind of what you're suggesting, Chet, or? Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's exactly what I was thinking, Dave, um, and, and just one idea out there, so. Tom, would that work for you? Yeah, that would be fine for us. I guess we think the more kind of firepower, the better. And um, gee, I'm looking at this letter and <laughs> the right hand column move. I did it in Google Docs, saved it as a Word doc. I guess we need to make it a PDF. But yeah, I mean, if if this letter could reside with you, with the commissioners and then be forwarded to FWP, um, you know, I mean, you received it from us because we are your mouthpiece up here and, you know, in the rural parts of the county. And you could have an eloquent transmittal letter. That would be fine. Our, our biggest thing is we think that if they hear about it earlier, like when in, this infrastructure money's around, you know, they might might be able to start something when the weather breaks this spring because again it's um you know we just i think we're going to see another like solid line of rvs again in 2022 and that worked for you and you yeah so. i mean it would be incredible if it was started this spring but I, I i have my doubts but yes i think whatever whatever we can do is is important and because like you've all said this is this is a serious issue so Chet, not that you're looking for any more work, uh, <laughs> but uh, would, would you uh, or someone on your staff mind drafting a, uh, a cover letter for this? And uh, I, I think it will be most impactful if we, we uh, do this as a package deal and send in our letter with the attachment uh, from the community council. 
Yeah, I agree with that, Dave. And, and I have to say, even though I do have a long list of to do items, I anticipated that would be your suggestion when I uh, offered my idea. So you're yeah, I'd be yeah. happy to take that on. Well, in, in chat, whoever might do that for you, um, then get in touch with me. As I say, this thing lives as a Google Doc. If they would like it as a PDF, if that's what you'll put the cover on, just let me know. I can send it. I'll fix it for them. That sounds great, Tom. And I, I just really like the notion of having the community's voice verbatim to go along with the commission's letter. I think that'll be uh, that'll add some power to the request. So. OK, we'll get that in the queue, Tom. And I see no reason why the community beyond the community council couldn't do a full court press here also and. Distribute a petition or or. Uh, a sign on letter of some sort just to, to amplify the voice of the community and that this is something that's needed. And Andy, so, oh, Andy's here from Pathfinder. So, so would either uh, Nathan or Andy, uh, I see we see that you're out there. Would do you have any questions for us? Okay, maybe not. Um, just to clarify that, if because we've got a pretty broad representation of the community on the council. Would it help and make this is for you, Chad, if we did a petition or something to circulate and then sent that to you as well? You Pers certainly could. could. Uh, yeah, you certainly could. I think that the letter you have, Tom, uh, as well as the commissions is certainly going to carry weight. Um, okay. You know, I, I I guess one thought that I would have, again, just a suggestion is you, you've got enough of an ask, I think, in the, the letters that we've just talked about. I think continuing to brainstorm solutions is probably going to be most advantageous to you. And if you came up with a list of some of those, you'll be ready should you hear back from FWP that they want to start talking about ideas. Uh, that would just be one suggestion. Petitions sometimes can help get people excited, but they don't always carry a lot of weight, if I'm just being honest. Well, then what we might do maybe for a community, our next community council meeting, have this as a main topic and then bring in folks sort of like Glacier Country at a symposium up here about a week and a half ago. And yeah, OK, that's a good idea. I like that. Yeah. OK, very good. Well, we'll get to work on that on our end, Tom. Uh, so thanks so much for helping carry water on this with the community council. Right. And uh, we will presumably when chat whenever we get a draft, we can put that on, a, on an admin agenda and then we can. Uh, tie a bow on this and get it out the door. That sounds good. Thanks all. Thank good. you. Thank you. Yep. Our next piece of correspondence would be. Draft 2021 Northwest Power Plant, Diana. Thank you, commissioners. Um, so these are joint comments from the uh, from Missoula County and the city of Missoula to the Northwest Power and Conservation Council on the topic of the 2021 uh, draft Northwest Power Plan. So just um, a little, little bit of background on that. Um, the Northwest Power and Conservation Council is not Northwestern Energy, though the name is, is kind of similar. Um, it's a separate organization that was created by federal law back in 1980 and it's responsible for developing plans for the, the Northwest electricity system. Um, and their focus is on an affordable and reliable system and also on protecting fish and wildlife in the Columbia River Basin. Um, the definition of Northwest for this purpose includes Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and Western Montana. So it's just those four states and the council includes um, appoint two appointed representatives um, from each of those states. Um, so the the Power Council puts out a, a power plan every five years. Um, they're currently working on the 2021 version of that and are accepting comments on it. Um, and so that's the opportunity that that the city and county have taken here to draft these comments. Um, it's a it's a good draft plan. Uh, it recognizes tremendous growth potential in renewable energy resources in the Northwest, wind and solar, um, and also recognizes potential for energy efficiency and demand response and energy storage, but we feel like um, there's there's more potential there in those latter cases, efficiency, um, demand response, um, load flexibility and energy storage. Um, and that's the nature of our comments is to say 
this is great, but it would be really great to see a larger role for those resources um, in the final plan because they are so important to ensure affordability and reliability and support that transition to clean electricity, um, which is, of course, a big priority for the city and county in the context of our 100% clean electricity goal. Um, so that's what these comments are about. Happy to, to answer any questions if, if you've got them. Thanks. No questions. questions, just thank you for being on top of this. Yeah. And since I forgot to ask, uh, just in general for the last item, if, if folks have uh, folks who are joining us and have any comments on either the letter related to the RV disposal station at Clearwater Junction or this Northwest Power Plan comment letter, now would be your time to chime in. Okay. Thanks, Diana. Well, we look forward to seeing this in our inbox to electronically sign. Thank you. Okay. Anything else that we need to uh, deal with today, right now? All right. With that, we'll be adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Great. Thank you. Goodbye.